friends, welcome back. I am Jason Salyer and I have been using and abusing this blade from Bear Force Knives for a while now and it's time for a little bit of maintenance. So this is a handmade knife called the Simple. It's got burly poplar handles, dyed this beautiful blue color and I guess it's kind of filled with some resin of some sort and it's just a if I have one complaint about this knife, I've only got one, it's that it's so pretty, I don't want to beat it up. But, as you can tell, I have, this past weekend, we were showing some guys how to do a flint and steel fire using this high carbon steel blade out of, made out of 52100. Very good, durable steel, holds a good edge, fairly easy to sharpen. Um, see how the sparks are hitting it? I don't know if you can see it on camera, but sparks are landing on that leaf. Barely. Yeah, but sparks are landing on that leaf and that will, that will, all it takes is a tiny spark to on catch, yeah. yeah, to catch on that charred cloth. We were showing guys how to basically make fire um, by striking sparks off the back of your knife blade, just using a, a creek rock piece of quartz. And I have messed it up badly. And what I like about this knife, one of the things I like about this knife is that it comes with a really, really sharp kind of 90 degree spine. And that makes it really good at striking sparks off of a ferro rod. But right now, it does a terrible job of striking sparks off a of ferro rod because I have damaged it so badly. I mean, we probably, I don't know, hit this thing several hundred times with a sharp rock, and that's caused the damage that you see there. Um, Scandinavian grind, fairly easy to maintain, and it is, it is razor sharp for any kind of woodworking, carving, notching stuff. A Scandinavian grind is the way to go, and this knife performs beautifully. And I'll give myself just a tiny little bit of a point just so I can get it started. And then it'll flatten it back out. These knives, this simple design, it's called the simple, is uh, they start somewhere around the $100 mark. I think they're 99 bucks. Um, and for that price, it is a handmade knife out of really high quality steel and that it's basically an heirloom tool. It's something that you could pass down to your children, you know. It's something that feels good in your hand, you know, you, you, you enjoy using it. Um, there's a lot of knives out there that, uh, that may cost a little less. Um, they may work just as well, but they don't give you that same kind of same kind of vibe you get off of using a handmade knife like this one. The blade's about an eighth of an inch thick, which is which is sturdy enough. I mean, you can make thicker blades, um, but then they don't slice quite as well. It's hard to get them as sharp because the thickness of the blade kind of hinders that. Um, so I like this thickness. The eighth of an inch, I think, is about perfect for a knife. Strong enough where you can use and abuse it, beat on it, baton it. It's not going to break. But thin enough where it's going to be sharp enough for some delicate work. I could put it on the grinder, but the grinder is just too aggressive and it would um, take away, remove too much material too fast. And I just want to be careful with it, take my time. No, oh, it froze. It froze faster than I could get to work on it. Never had to heat up a whetstone before. It's getting there. Um, and it doesn't have to be pretty. I'm not trying to make it perfect. That's not my style. I like things that are a little bit beat up and abused. I'm gonna turn it flat on its side and I'm gonna have to get rid of a little bit of that going on there. A little burr is not a big deal, but I don't want those big chips kind of taken out of the steel. Just turn it flat on its side for a second. I spoke with Garrett, the owner of the company, on the phone, a super nice guy, um, out in California, out in the desert, and uh, close to where I actually used to live. And, uh, He's probably not pleased with how I'm treating his blade at the moment, <laughs> but that's okay. 
this whetstone is actually working much better than the um, than the file for getting it back into shape. It's cutting the steel better than that file was. A file might be half wore out. I I tend to get my money's worth out of tools. Use them. Use like saw blades until they're absolutely destroyed. Useless, where you have to push the saw through. <laughs> Every now and then just dunk your, your whetstone back in the uh, back in the water just so it gives it this kind of this slurry effect. You don't want you don't want to use a dry stone because what you'll do is you'll fill up the stone with metal material and then your stone won't work anymore. It won't be coarse enough to cut it. I could spend all day polishing this thing, getting it back to the beautiful condition that it came in. Or I could say it's good enough, and that is typically my way because all I need this thing to do on the back is to scrape some tinder off some some uh, some tree bark or something like that. Um, and do that. And if it does that from both directions, regardless of which hand you're using it with, then it's good to go. And I call that good enough. It's still pretty sharp, but I'm just gonna, it's got a couple of boogered up spots. I'm not sure exactly why. Now, here's the thing about a Scandinavian grind. I like Scandinavian grinds because man, there is nothing sharper. It, if you're doing fine woodwork, um, carving traps, bushcrafty type things, and that's, that's what you're into. And I'll pop that piece out then a Scandinavian grind like this is perfect. However, if you're gonna be using and abusing and prying paint cans and <laughs> using things that not necessarily a knife was intended for, um, then a Scandinavian grind is a little bit fragile, a little bit too delicate for that. But putting an edge back on one is pretty simple. For that, I'll just use my diamond stone. This one is a, uh, I forget what the actual grit is on these, but this one's from Dia Sharp. See that? Die sharp. It's got a coarse side here and it's got a fine side here and all we will need is the fine side. So I've done sharpening videos in the past, but I'll go ahead and do a quick update just in case you guys didn't see that video. But basically what I'll do with the Scandinavian grind, it's pretty simple to see, is I will rotate the blade until you see the bevel, the cutting edge of the knife come in contact with the stone right there. And with this big flat grind, grind like that, it's pretty easy to feel as well. Just flop it over till it goes flat. And then I'll take the stone and I'll move it in small circles. I'm icing up again, darn it. But I'll use it, I'll move it in small circles like this. I gotta warm up my stone, this is ridiculous. Now as that's, my stone is warming up. Um, this is, I, I think this is just about the perfect size for just for pretty much all woodworking, bushcrafty type tasks. Um, the blade is long enough to baton through some smaller material, right at four inches. So the blade on this thing is four inches long and the handle is right at four inches well, maybe just over four inches. And it's just kind of the, it's, it's called the simple, right? It says it right here on the blade and it is about as simple as it gets. It fits in your hand really well, it's a great size. Um, your hand doesn't get tired using it. There's nothing fancy about it, but either way, any way you grip it doesn't really matter. It gets the job done. Um, and I just really, really like it. There's, there, there's nothing to really complain about a knife like this. I'll roll it till the edge, the cutting edge touches the stone. See that right there. And I'll maintain that angle as I work my stone in small circles. I like to move the stone and not the knife if possible, um, because I, that allows me to see the angle I'm holding the blade much better. If I move the knife, I can't see it. If I move the stone, I can see what's happening. And I'll just do up and down the whole length of the blade. My stone got too hot now, it's just evaporating the water off too fast, but you can see kind of that slurry that's happening. Another technique that works really well for with a larger stone like this one is I'll lay it, after I dip it in the water, I'll lay it on my workbench 
um, and it helps keep the water on the stone, helps me you maintain that slurry that's going on. And I'll use two hands to maintain that angle. So you can see I flop it over to that flat bevel grind of that Scandi grind, gets it comes in contact with the stone. And I'll just do small circles, I'm not pushing hard, I'm just letting the diamonds and the stone do the work for me. And I'll just rotate it around, small circles. And every now and then I'll re-dip my stone. And I'll do the equal amount of, spend the equal amount of time on both sides, just rotating it. So again, this is a bare forest knife. I'll put a link in the description for you so you can check them out. Um, he'll, he'll make custom knives for you, call him up, draw a picture of what, what you want. Um, and he'll, uh, he'll, he'll make something really, really nice for you. Or you can order one of these. They, they don't typically come with a handle like this. This is a fancy one. They'll come with, uh, an oak handle. The simple ones will come with an oak handle. And, uh, but you know, nothing wrong with oak. I like how the blade is sharpened all the way up to the handle. It makes it a little bit hard to sharpen, in my opinion, but it is nice because when you choke up on the knife, you can get right in there and really do some really fine, delicate carving and stuff and have lots of control. Generally what I'll do after I finish sharpening is I'll take my knife and I'll stick it on the edge of my thumbnail. And if it's catchy, if it's tacky, if it doesn't easily slide across my thumbnail, then I know it's nice and sharp. And I know that that is now a serviceable edge back to 90 degrees on the backside so it'll throw sparks off a ferro rod. And this simple from Bear Force Knives is back ready for action. Oftentimes, knife makers put a whole lot of thought and energy into designing the actual blade, the knife handle and all the ergonomics that go into it, but they almost, it's like the sheath is an afterthought. We'll make this beautiful piece of, of hardware and eh, we'll just throw it in something, wrap it in there so people don't get cut. Um, and to me, that's a mistake because if a knife doesn't have a good quality sheath, I won't carry it and it's not gonna be useful at all to me. This, however, is a really high quality sheath. This is made of Kydex, which is my preferred material because it's gonna last longer than leather. It doesn't need to be maintained. It's waterproof, all that good stuff. And it's got really, really, really good retention, um, better than most leather sheaths. So I like that a lot. Um, in its configuration at the moment, it's set up to be carried horizontal, which is nice because if you carry it in the front horizontally, you can bend over, squat down, it doesn't get in the way. You don't even know you're wearing it. You can wear it in the small of your back. Um, but this could easily be adapted to be carried vertically as well on a hip. Um, it's a little bit big for a neck knife, but you could set it up for that as well. So sheath, stamp of approval. Overall, the Bear Force knife, the simple, uh, gets my stamp of approval. This beautiful piece of hardware will be given to my wife. And that is not a small thing to say because my wife is the most near and dear precious thing in my life and if I am going to give her a piece of equipment that she can trust her life to um, it needs to be really really high quality and this is it so anyway guys I hope you enjoyed the video make sure you hit that thumbs up leave us a comment tell me what you think about whatever doesn't really matter as long as you leave a comment it's really really helpful and we will see you on the next video